What's happening, guys? This is the Grand Master of Faster, and welcome to my new Let's Play of Pikmin. Ah, uh, let's not waste any time. I think we should just jump straight into the action. I was watching my extra video on Luigi's Mansion, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna give Pikmin a shot. I know the game reasonably well, and it's uh, one of my favorites on the GameCube. So, without further ado, let us proceed. My name is Captain Olimar. While traveling through space, my ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out, and I awoke on the surface of a weird planet. With so many parts lost, the skeletal hull of my beloved dolphin is a painful sight. The engine is gone. I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my atmospheric sensors indicate this planet's environment contains high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for only 30 days. If I can't repair the dolphin by then... No! Better not to think about it. I must find the missing ship parts. The reason why I decided to give this game a try is because it's an RTS game, and I've never done an RTS game before. And this is a really good gateway game for those who are interested in RTS. What do we have here? Well, like any intrepid adventurer, let's go ahead and inspect it. A strange thing has appeared before me. I had barely begun my search when it reared up as if it were waiting for me. It then dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it a machine? It resembles a vegetable on my home planet that we call an onion. I shall call this an onion too. He calls it an onion and yet it bears no resemblance to a real life onion whatsoever. Ooh, shiny. Shiny with a red, shiny glow. The seed that the onion dropped took root in the soil and has now produced an adorable little sprout. This sprout emits a strange light and it sways back and forth without benefit of wind. I cannot help but think it is calling to me. I am compelled. I must approach it and press the A button. And when we do... Oh, it's so cute. Extraordinary. When I plucked the sprout, it turned out to be a living creature, not a plant. Picking it has done no visible damage. It just stands there staring at me. Its shape is similar to the Pick Pick brand carrots I love so much. I believe I shall call it a Pikmin. Here I am, stranded on a toxic planet, fighting to survive, and yet I'm intrigued. I must research this fascinating creature. I shall try to grab it and throw it with the A button, and I will call it to my side with the B button. Hmm, perhaps it will react to the C stick and X button as well. 
and he's just going to go over the controls. I promise I will not uh, read every single one of his notes because, well, like any first episode of the Let's Play, this is very tutorial heavy as it needs to explain the game's mechanics. Uh, but those pellets that that pellet you just saw me destroy, it propagates more Pikmin seeds. Uh, this is a pellet posy, by the way, and it's going to be your main source of increasing your Pikmin population, along with enemies. But uh, we'll get more into enemies once we encounter them, because there are a ton of enemies in this game. And each one requires a unique method of fighting. Well, I shouldn't say unique. More along the lines of, there are certain ways that you should fight it if you don't want to suffer heavy Pikmin losses. Now that we have five Pikmin, let's go ahead and bring back this pellet with a five on it. Uh, the larger the pellet, the more Pikmin it requires to carry, but also... Larger pellets will give out bigger increases. So you saw the uh, one pellet only gave us two Pikmin. Well, this should give us a lot more. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the maximum amount of Pikmin you can uh, get during this first day is around 20 or 25. Ah, there, see, we got five pellets. Very helpful. This is definitely slow-paced. Or I should say, this tutorial is definitely slow-paced. But uh, it does a good job of explaining the game's mechanics, I think. So, a uh, basic uh, control tutorial. You can use the L, R, and Z button to um, rotate the camera. Uh, the control stick moves, obviously. Um... Pressing the A button will allow you to throw Pikmin, and uh, the B button lets you whistle them back. If you press the X button, you can uh, disband the Pikmin and leave them in a certain air and leave them in an area, and come back to them later. The C stick is rather interesting. It allows you to move your Pikmin around and issue commands to them. Uh, this can be useful if there is a particular object that you want them to pick up. Unfortunately, the Pikmin have a tendency to pick things up all on their own, and trust me when I say this, that's going to get annoying. It doesn't appear to be an issue for now, but trust me, it will be. Alright, ah, there's another one pellet. So this should bring my total up to 14. I know they do seem slow, and they are, at first, but later we'll uh, find a way to uh, make them work faster and hit harder. But, yeah, this is the tutorial, and tutorials are always slow. By the way, if you press the Y button, you can pull up a uh, screen that uh, can doesn't really do much at first, but once we get a particular ship part, that's going to prove to be very, very useful. And yeah, that's the basic premise of this game. The crash landing scattered 30 of the Olimar's most important ship parts. And using the Pikmin, you have to bring them back. Alright, so this box has a number 10 on top of it. But that number 10 isn't just for show. As a matter of fact, you need 10 Pikmin to push this box into place. As they always say, the individual may be weak, but the collective is always strong. Alright, he's just going to go over the controls one more time. But, looky here! Amazing! There's no mistaking it! 
My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I have already stumbled upon the most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but how will I get it back to the dolphin? How indeed, because as you can see, we're going to need 20 in order to carry it back. Fortunately, the area is nice enough to leave us some more pellets. And he was... Alamar was not joking when he said he found his engine by a stroke of pure luck. Because think about it. He needs the engine in order to take off. Imagine how screwed he would be if he crash landed and the engine didn't land near him. He'd probably die. Olimar, you are a lucky bastard. All right. So we've got some more sprouts to pluck. When many Pikmin seeds sprout at once, I find it rather tedious to pluck them from the ground individually. Yada, 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 yada. Okay. Basically, what he's saying is that if you press the A button repeatedly, you can pluck the Pikmin seeds faster. Alright, we've just got to wait until they bring back that five pellet. Uh, there are three types of Pikmin in all, uh, but we'll get more into the uh, other two types of Pikmin when we actually encounter them. But for now, I'm going to talk a bit about Red Pikmin. Reds are impervious to fire. And they are also the strongest Pikmin. So these guys are going to be our main attack force when dealing with enemies. Aside from that, though, there's nothing particularly noteworthy about them. Well, now that we have 25 Pikmin, let's go ahead and carry the engine back to the dolphin. And the name Dolphin is sort of tongue-in-cheek when you think about it, because if you know your Nintendo history, you will know that the Dolphin was the original name of the GameCube. And, well, GameCube just sounds cooler, let's be honest. I mean, think about it. This dolphin is the next great console of Nintendo gaming. Doesn't really ring that well off the tongue, or however the phrase goes. Okay, guys, just take your time. The good news is once the engine is brought back to the ship, the uh, day is going to end. In fact, that's something I should know. For the first day, there is no time limit. But that will change. Okay, it's nothing to ride home about, but hey, bringing back the engine made it all sparkly and functional. If only real, if only vehicles in real life worked that well. Oh, glorious! With the help of these Pikmin, I've taken a huge step back toward home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning to burn more brightly. But what has become of the remaining parts? That search starts tomorrow. And lo and behold, it is automatically the end of the day. Um, yeah, get used to seeing this cutscene a lot. In fact, you will see it a maximum of 30 times. Because as Olimar said, you are operating on a time limit. One day since impact, I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lift off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface, or have they merely decided to join me for other reasons? Either way, it seems they will help me again tomorrow. The dolphin is missing 29 parts. If I can't recover them all, I may never return home to my family on planet Hokote. Analysis shows life support systems will function for only 29 more days. 
How can I repair my dolphin in such a short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below. As it holds the keys to my survival, I name it the Forest of Hope. I explore it tomorrow. So when the day is done, you get this uh, nice little graph to show you the change in Pikmin population, how many Pikmin you have sprouted, and how many Pikmin have been killed and or left behind. And uh, at the bottom, it shows you how many ship parts you have le yet to collect and how many days you have remaining. So yeah, that's the ending screen in a nutshell. And next time on Let's Play Pikmin, we are going to explore the Forest of Hope. If you like my videos, please be sure to leave a like or comment below and subscribe to my channel. Every one of those really helps. See you guys next time. Hey, did you like what you saw? Then be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter for updates on my videos. Also, do you want to record LP videos like me? Then check out my kit page for my go-to equipment for recording.